great to have you. Uh, we got a really many of you have been taking this class regularly, have been watching tapes. I'm very appreciative that the feedback is good, positive and negative. Actually, I learned from both. So, what we where we left off, we were looking at the Book of Esther. When Haman sets a day, gets this day set to exterminate and attack all the Jews in the kingdom. And that day gets, a divine reversal takes place, and on that same very day, the Jews instead attack their enemies and destroy them all. And that pattern runs through history. It's been repeated many times. I'm going to look at one of those. <clears throat> During World War II, the Nazis obviously were famous for... Uh, doing everything they could to destroy the Jewish people. And their first response was to force the Jews to leave the country or, or to treat them as slave labor. But the Nazis, by 1941, had a policy that they called the Final Solution. And the Final Solution was to attempt to capture, round up all the Jews they could and, and kill every single Jew in Europe. Their, their goal was to kill 11 million Jews. And they were very systematic and knowing about that. Unfortunately, quite successful, 6 million Jews lost their lives. Now, what people often don't, you see a picture of a concentration camp where they dug a ditch and put all the bodies, you see it there. And it, taken in uh, 1945, April 1945, what people don't realize is the price tag that the, that the Germans paid for doing this. Uh, I mentioned 1941, it seems they made a decision to what they call the final solution to try to eliminate all the Jews in Europe. And though they wanted to destroy 11 million people, unfortunately they succeeded in murdering 6 million Jews. So the German military casualties in World War II were greater than the number of Jews that they killed. And as far as the German military, 5.3 million, about 5.3 million German soldiers died during World War II, and somewhere between 1.1 and 2.3 million civilians. So, a minimum, total number of Germans who died during the war was 6.3 million to 7 point something million. We don't know exactly. But if you will, the Germans took greater casualties than the Jews. Obviously, there was a measure of divine retribution. You wonder why wasn't it more? Well, the Germans weren't the only people who wanted to destroy the Jews. They couldn't do this without the help of other uh, national groups, national leaders, who also wanted to, who hated the Jews. And interesting, the country that took the, 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 uh, the most casualties in World War II was the Soviet Union. The Soviet Union was controlled by communists who hate God. Uh, you can be arrested, uh, you can put to death for, for confessing faith in God. And this godless Soviet Union and this godless Nazis go at each other. And so the Russians lost somewhere between 8.8 .8 million men and 10.7 million men and 15 million civilians. Russia has traditionally been a Jew-hating nation. And so these two nations that hated the Jews went at each other and killed each other. Uh, there is a measure of divine justice being executed here. It's there. Now, I say that because we're going to see in the book of Revelation another attempt at a final solution, an attempt to kill every Jew on the planet. And there's going to be a reversal where just the opposite happens. We want to look at that next. And what's going on here in Zechariah 3.1, it illustrates the fact that Satan has always harbored an extreme hatred towards the Jews. Obviously because God has blessed them, obviously because Messiah Jesus has come from them, obviously because they have the scriptures which, which exposes who and what he is, uh, but his hatred for the Jews has always been there. And so in Zechariah 3.1 it says, Then he showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord, and Satan standing at his right hand to oppose him. Joshua is the Old Testament name for Jesus. This is the Savior, speaking of the Savior here, really. Joshua the high priest. Jesus is the high priest of our confession. So, 
This opposition, he is the he is the adversary. It's one of the definitions of his name. He's the adversary, he's the opponent. And he particularly opposes the Jews and has an extreme hatred for them. And it will be his demise, as, as it was Hitler's demise. So, when we go to Revelation 12, 1 through 17, we can see this played out. In Revelation chapter 12, we see a woman, a child, and a dragon. They're very important here. Let me read it and we'll make sense of what's going on here. If we were doing this class live and I was not videotaping and put it on YouTube, I have amazing graphics for this thing. But my license says I can show them to thousands of people. The minute I put them on the internet, I'm, I'm avoiding and breaking copyright laws. So we'll just have to look at the word and have a good imagination here. Now, a great sign appeared in heaven. A woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a garland of twelve stars. That is a type of the Jewish nation. And it comes from Genesis 37, 9 through 11, in which, uh, in which Joseph has a dream. And in this dream, he sees his 11 brothers, represented by 11 stars, the son rep representative of his father, and the moon his mother, bowing down to him. Here we have 12, because they're, they're, they're all together. So it's a picture of the 12 tribes of Israel, and it says... And on her head was a garland of twelve stars. Those twelve stars are the twelve tribes of Israel. They have an eternal blessing promised them they're going to receive. And it says, And then with child she cried out in labor and pain to give birth. And another sign appeared in heaven. Behold, a great fiery red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns, and seven diadems on his heads. This is the Antichrist. This is, this is actually Lucifer. Actually, excuse me, Dan, this, is, this is Lucifer. He's the red dragon. But the, uh, uh, it's his Antichrist government that he's set up on earth. His tail drew a third of the stars of heaven and threw them on the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman who was ready to give birth, to devour her child as soon as it was born. She bore a male child who was to rule all the nations with a rod of iron. <clears throat> now it speaks of the fact that Herod the Great tried to murder the Christ child soon after he was born. But it speaks of a second birth. Israel, through these 144,000 evangelists and for the events of the tribulation, are ready as a nation, the whole nation, to be born, to be born again, to believe in Jesus. And there's a persecution of them. He does not want this to happen. She bore a male child who was to rule all the nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up to God in his throne. Jesus has ascended. He has been taken up. But what happens now? Then the woman fled into the wilderness, where she has a place prepared by God, and they should feed her there 1,260 days, about three and a half years. In the middle of the tribulation, the Antichrist with his armies uh, will come and will invade Israel. The people of Judah and Jerusalem will flee into the wilderness. We're going to look at this. This is this woman fleeing. So, let's go on, I'm going to show it to you in Isaiah, we're going to show it to you a couple other places. Uh, there's a blessing and a curse going on here. Genesis 12, 1 through 3, in verse 3 it says about Abraham and his descendants, I will bless them that bless you, and I will curse him who curses you. Those who attempt to destroy the Jews have always been cursed. It has always come back on them, in modern times and in ancient times. They may succeed in killing many Jews, but they are going to pay for it dearly. So we're going to see this, this come to pass. So, the real final solution, it's in Isaiah 34. Now, I know we are doing a little apocalypse from 24 to 27, but the events near the end of the tribulation period are clearly put here in chapter 34. And I want you to see them. Come near, you nations, to hear. Heed, you people, let the earth hear and all that is in it. The world and all things come forth from it. For the indignation of the Lord is against all nations, and his fury against all the armies. He will utterly destroy them. He has given them over to the slaughter. Now, watch what's going on here, where, where it's going on. Okay, A total destruction. We've talked about that. That's like in chapter 24 of Isaiah. 
Also their slain shall be thrown down, their stench shall rise from their corpses, and the mountain shall be melted with their blood. Huh. Tense. All the host of heaven shall be dissolved, and the heavens will be rolled up like a scroll. All their holes shall fall down, as the leaf falls from the vine, and as fruit falling from a fig tree. Now watch the last verse here, verse 5. For my sword shall be bathed in heaven, indeed it shall come down on Edom. Edom? Not Israel, Edom. And we're going to look where Edom is on the map, so you see this. He's talking about every nation on earth sending their armies to attack the Jews, and God is going to deal with them in Edom, and on the people of my curse for judgment. Now, so he mentions Edom here. Let's go to Matthew 24 here in the Gospels, because this, is, this explains what's going on. Why is the Antichrist fighting the Jews in Edom? Why is he not fighting them in Israel? Well, it's because they fled. And that's what Matthew 24 says in 15 through 18. Therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, standing in the holy place, today there is no Jewish temple. For the prophecies of, of the tribulation for to take place, the Jews need to rebuild the temple. There are Jews who want to do it today. Uh, there's actually a plan to do it today and to sacrifice there, but it's not there. There will be a rebuilt temple. And when that temple is rebuilt, the Antichrist will enter that temple. He will set up his image there. He will declare himself God and demand worship. The Jews are given instructions what to do here. When you see uh, the abomination of desolation, that's the Antichrist, spoken of by Daniel the prophet. Whoever reads, let him understand. Well, let those who are in Judea flee uh, to the mountains. I believe in the Gospel of Matthew it says flee to the desert. Well, Edom is a mountainous desert. <laughs> so both Gospel writers got it right. Yes, they're fleeing to the mountains. Yes, they're fleeing to the desert. They're fleeing to a mountainous desert-like country. They're fleeing to Edom. Let him who is on the house top not go down and take anything out of the house. And let him who is in the field not go back to get his clothes. Now that's a picture of, of the temple that, that Jesus entered. That temple was destroyed in, in 70 A.D. But it gives you an idea that where the Antichrist will declare himself deity, and the Jews are told, when he does it, flee! Now, we have a, we've talked about this. We have 144,000 Jewish evangelists. They're saying, listen, Yeshua, Jesus, he told us they're going to invade, he told us to flee. When it actually happens, they may think these guys are idiots, don't know what they're talking about. When it happens, they'll say they're right. I guess you're right. What else does it say there? I mean, you know, at some point they're going to realize what's going on or the scriptures are true and they're being fulfilled before their eyes. So, when they flee, they're going to flee to Edom. Now, the next several verses in Isaiah 34, 12 through 17, talk about the destruction of the armies of the Antichrist in Edom. Men will never inhabit at that part of the world. Wild animals will live there. There will be no human beings living there forever. I'm marking the place where they attempted to destroy the Jews. It's going to be uninhabitable forever. So I'm, going to, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but you can see that for yourself. Read through it on your own time. What I will go to is a map to show you where Edom is. Some of you need to picture this in your mind. If you look on the map of the kingdom of Judah, in the center of it, to the right of it, the Dead Sea. Below the Dead Sea is the kingdom of Edom. Edom is the name given to the people of Esau. Uh, Edom means red, and Esau was, was a red-looking baby. And he, he traveled south, formed a kingdom there, and in Edom, and you, it's in small print here, is in Greek the word is Petra, which means rock. And it's a rock-like mountain fortress, Petra. And the Hebrew, it's Basra. Both Edom and Basra are identified in the Old Testament scriptures as the place where the armies of the Antichrist will be destroyed. They will flee to Edom. They will flee to Basra. They will be protected there by God. I, I will show you some pictures of it in a moment. It's, it's a famous... There's cliffs in, in Petra or Basra, and they chiseled uh, buildings out of the cliffs. They're very beautiful, and people go there to see this. They have like 400,000 visitors a year. 
it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very famous site, but they're going to go there, and God is going to protect them there. So, uh, the mountain fortress of Basra, in the Hebrew and the Greek is Petra, you can look at it on the bottom of your map there. That's where they're going to flee to. Now, Jeremiah speaks of this also. Jeremiah chapter 49, verses 13 and 14. You make it clear. For I have sworn by myself, says Jehovah, that Basra shall become an astonishment. Now, when they go to attack Basra, they're going to be laid waste. A reproach, a waste, and a curse. And the cities thereof shall be perpetual waste. I have heard tidings from Jehovah, and an ambassador is sent among the nations, saying, Gather yourselves together, come against her, and rise up to the battle. It's like God is saying, Come on, you want to try to destroy the Jews? Come, 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 come. Visit us in Basra. We have a plan. <laughs> now, <laughs> then we're going to go, it just, like I say, it's not just in Isaiah, we looked at Isaiah, it's not just in Jeremiah. Now we're going to go to Micah, chapter 2, verse 12. And these are the ruins uh, there of, 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 uh, that, are, that are in Basra, some of the ruins. I will surely assemble Jacob, all of them. I will surely gather the remnant of Israel. I will put them together as the sheep of Basra. Oh, the sheep of Basra. Basra, imagine here again. As the flock in the midst of their fold, they shall, take, they shall make great noise by reason of the multitude of men. I'm going to gather my people like sheep in Basra. And those who attack them are going to be destroyed. That's the final solution. The haters of the Jews are going to be destroyed, not the Jews. There's a twist there, but a real one. It's going to be history. Now, I'm going to, I'm going to end this thing here. Maybe one of my shorter classes, perhaps, here. But you're looking I, I, uh, a little bit about Basra. This is what people go to see there. But... You can imagine uh, hundreds of thousands of Jews gathering there. They will be protected. They will be supernaturally, we've already read it in Revelation, they're going to be supernaturally provided for. The devil is going to try supernaturally to flood them. God will open the earth to, uh, to uh, alleviate the flooding. They're going to be there three and a half years. It's a desert. It's a mountainous desert. I have to imagine they're going to be fed by God in the same way that the Jews were fed in the wilderness under Moses. It's like we're going to have, how would you say it? We're going to have a honeymoon in the wilderness. And God's provision for them is going to bring them to the place where they call on Christ at the end of the tribulation period. When they call on him as a nation and mourn for him, he will come. At that moment, the armies who are prepared to destroy them will then, in fact, be destroyed. So, I believe the mountainous wilderness refuge the Jews will flee to is clearly identified in the scriptures, in Isaiah, in Micah, in Jeremiah. It's a place known as Basra in the Hebrew, Petra in the Greek. It's presently listed as, as a UNESCO World Heritage Site visited by over 400,000 tourists each year. It is a natural mountainous refuge in the ancient land of Edom, in modern-day southern Jordan. The Jews will flee there, according to what Isaiah said, Jeremiah said, Micah said. And in the book of Revelation, too, in the wilderness, he's going to provide for them. We're going to see a final solution to the problems of this earth. Amen?